Hello and welcome back to SOB Gaming. This is episode 8 of KSP Exploration, my sandbox progression series in KSP 1.0. This is still stock only, so please leave your suggestions on whether or not I should add the mods uh, Kerbal Plus, USI Life Support, or Kerbal Inventory System. Okay, so this uh, video today is going to be the replacement for the Osprey Unmanned Mining Probe. Now, if you watch that video, it's episode uh, 3, I believe. The Osprey Mining Probe was an unmanned Minmus mining lander, which uh, was brought, it would be transported to Minmus on board uh, CTV-4, docked to it, and once deposited, into, once deposited into orbit, it would land in the flats, drill some ore, bring it back to the Minmus Frontier Station, and in the station, refine it all into some nice uh, fuel oxidizer and monopropellant. However, as it usually goes with new designs, the first one had some serious issues. First of all, since it used plate solar panels instead of extendable ones, it lacked the ability to radiate heat at a proper rate. Because of this, the drills overheated very fast. Now, that isn't really an issue in the newer versions because this was before the hot fixes, but better solar panels were still needed because we were having power issues. The second issue was that I landed in the wrong spot, as in there was no, there were no resources there, and that coupled with the overheating issues made it, it there were other smaller issues, but the Osprey was basically a failed design. And uh, the other major issue was that it lacked SAS, other than integrated SAS, which means that it was so slow turning, and it couldn't right itself on Minmus, so I had to land it in the flats. Without modifications, it could not land in the mountains where the biggest resource deposits are because of its inability to land on any sort of slanted surface. So I designed this, the Eagle Mining Probe, the uh, successor to the Osprey, which should actually work. Again, built with two drills, although only one is operational. The second drill is just a counterweight for the first, using actual extendable panels, some two small ore tanks instead of uh, one large one, and uh, it's got an interesting propulsive landing design. It actually has engines and fuel above the rest of the assembly, which means you can't actually land it with the solar panels because the propellant will hit the solar panels and just bounce off and you won't go anywhere. But if you retract those, uh, it's a pretty good design and it lands pretty well. Also has SAS. This design is too large to be launched aboard SSTO single stage to orbit, so we were using a... Uh, it's a three stage design. We have first booster stage which gets you into space, the second stage with a skipper engine which gets you into orbit and to Minmus, and uh, actually almost all the way through the landing as well. You'll see it explode at the end if that's what you like, because who doesn't want to see explosions in Kerbal Space Program? Look forward to that. And then the other thing we have is third stage which is just the landing stage and that's on top of the lander. Uh, it's got more power than the Osprey, which means it can mine for longer, and uh, I landed in one of the highest resource concentrations on Minmus seen by my scanner. You'll see the method for choosing that spot. A uh, little bit of adjustment for the rotation of Minmus means I landed right in the center of the green area, which indicated high resource concentrations. I was not able to get a detailed narrowband scan of that, but it wasn't really necessary. So. After landing, I decided to test the two drills. Of course, they didn't work both at the same time. You would run out of power and it would shut down. One drill works well during the day. It does not work at night because of the solar panels. And the resource concentrations are still rather low, but it's the highest you're going to get on Minimus. Now, of course, you can't compare this to an asteroid. Those have insane resource rates. Although they are limited on Minimus, they are unlimited. But the drill does work, and I was able to get some ore in the tanks, and while it's not full yet, it will be run over time, and eventually I'll have enough to fly up to the station, have plenty of fuel, dock with the station this time, with the new adapter, and uh, refine all that fuel uh, ore into fuel and monopropellant. That can go into the giant uh, fuel tank we have left over from the Frontier Station's uh, second stage booster. Right now it has enough fuel to refuel around 10 MSL landers. It's it's a lot for small ships, but this fuel allows to completely fill it up and uh, might even be able to use that booster once full to transport it to another system, planetary system. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. 
So the Eagle Lander is definitely a big success, especially compared to the Osprey. The Osprey is actually still in the flats. It's the only spacecraft I have left in the flats. If you watch the old videos, the Osprey was the first to land in the flats, the second craft to land on Minmus after Jeb's one, uh, Jeb's uh, quick landing on Minmus and back, which actually wasn't on recording, but it wasn't that important. It was just kind of a flags on the ground landing. Quickly followed the Osprey was the uh, Minmus Frontier Ground Base, which landed uh, 10 kilometers to the north. Uh, no, about 20 to the northeast, also in the flats. And uh, an MSL also landed there to resupply, Minmus Surface Lander, uh, crew resupply ship. And uh, Minmus Ground, however, had to relocate, and uh, the recent Vision Rover also landed nowhere near Osprey. So Osprey is pretty... um isolated now, and it doesn't work either, so I'm not sure what to do with it. The Eagle Probe, you might have seen, landed on the exact opposite side of Minmus as the Vision Rover, Osprey, and Minmus Frontier Ground. This means that it's very unlikely if something like breaks that I'll be able to send a servicing mission, although I wouldn't be able to do that anyway without Kerbal Attachment System or Kerbal Inventory System, but I might be adding that mod. But, yeah, this thing is unlikely to get picked up without so if it's if something falls over and breaks, it's probably gonna have to just send a new mining probe. You may notice it's rather large. I tried to make it shrink down the size in order to uh, get a smaller lander, of course. But those drills are really heavy, and uh, ore tanks are big as well. So it was rather difficult. And this is about as small as it gets, despite being a rather large, well, mid-sized lander, I guess. So uh, as I said in the last video, I'm thinking of adding some mods, and I said that at the beginning. Uh, please comment if you'd like to give me any suggestions, or if you think I should add these mods, or not add these mods. Right now I'm in all stock. The mods I kind of wanted to add were Kerbal Inventory System, it's an upgraded version of CAS, Kerbal Attachment System. Uh, lots of cool stuff in there, being able to move parts on EVA, lots of tools for Kerbals, just looks cool. Kerbal Plus is a uh, big planet pack, which you should check out. And uh, the final one would be the USI life support, which is a life support mod where instead of dying, the Kerbals just stop doing anything. They essentially become tourists from career mode. They just don't do anything. And that's nice because if you have like a save issue or time accidental time warp, you won't kill off your entire crew. You'll just have to resupply them. And I kind of like that because it'll allow me to actually create resupply ships along with Kerbal inventory system, which I can't really do right now. There's no point other than transporting crew. It just sounds more fun. Anyway, uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, be sure to rate the video, subscribe if you enjoyed, and thanks for watching, I will see you next time.